Well, the Fred Hoiberg era is off to a shaky start as Nebraska fell to UC Riverside 66 to 47 tonight. Definitely not what fans expected. I'm Allie Snow and alongside me is Robin Washa. Robin, Nebraska started off hot the first half. They made six of, the, seven, six of seven of their shots. What happened? Well, I don't know. I mean, they made further for their six, seven shots and then uh, could not buy a bucket the rest of the night. I mean, just there, there was no rhythm, no flow, no, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, direction for that offense. They just seemed to just be jacking up three pointers or throwing up wild layups at the rim. Uh, and it really looked like uh, they got into panic mode. Uh, you know, Kenneth Cheatham after the game said uh, when UC Riverside came back with that run early, I think they bounced back with a 12-2 you know, run to, you know, basically even the game up. They didn't know how to respond. I mean, they said that the UC Riverside slapped him in the face, and they just basically took it and uh, panicked and kind of just went away with whatever game plan they had offensively, and it showed. Uh, I mean, that was as poor of an offensive performance as you're ever going to see from a Fred Hoiberg team. In fact, that is the lowest point total ever by a Fred Hoiberg coach team. So to put that in perspective, uh, this is about as big of an outlier as you could possibly imagine. And on the other hand, going into this game, there was some concerns about the rebounding efforts. Now Nebraska's defense kind of fell apart in the second half. What were your thoughts on that? Well, you know, they obviously have a seven foot one center and um, uh, Callum McRae, who they knew it was going to cause some problems, but it was the guards that were getting the rebounds. Uh, George Wilborn III had 18 rebounds. He's a six foot nothing guard who had 18 boards. And so I think a lot of that is effort and when your your confidence is shot and you're starting to like hang your head and feel sorry for yourself you give up those long rebounds those effort rebounds that was just coming down and chasing down along uh, a long board uh, where your guy gets the ball before you and I think you saw that far too often where uh, I think there was an 11-0 uh, discrepancy in second chance points uh, you know the, the rebounding like you said uh, UC Riverside doubled them up and yeah you know they're gonna be a smaller Nebraska is a smaller team but to be dominated to that much uh, against a team that was picked seventh in the Big West preseason poll, who was out two of its best players, uh, it's, in, it's inexcusable is what it comes down to. And so um, this is uh, kind of a real turning point in game one where this team needs to figure out what it is. And you know, to their credit, this is their first real game together. You know, they played exhibitions, they played scrimmages, uh, and so you know, there's some kinks that still need to be worked out. But for them to come out with this type of effort in front of 15,000 strong uh, was frustrating, disappointing, and about as big of a letdown as you can imagine. So um, the effort has to get better. The on-court leadership needs to get better. Uh, guys need to start talking. I think that when, when things started rolling against them, they just kind of shelled up and just hoped that things were going to happen as, as opposed to rallying together and creating plays. And so that's a big job for Fred Hoiberg and the staff to get that fixed. But I think it comes down to the players. This, these guys need to stop worrying about hurting each other's feelings and being buddies. They need some senior leaders to step up and kind of put their foot down whenever the things even get close to getting that bad. And you know, we'll see how they respond on Saturday, but clearly this was a far bigger rebuild project than uh, anyone expected. And we expected it was going to be a big process. Right. And when you have a team, 14 roster team, Nebraska's actually tied for TCU for the most first year players. So they're getting used to Division One, but we knew this was going to be a rebuilding process for the Huskers. But after tonight, you know, where does Nebraska go from here, Robin? Well, I mean, like I said, they've got some soul searching to do these next few days. Fred Hoiberg was adamant that this team was going to come back the right way uh, and practice, you know, with some high energy and play like the team that they know they can be. And so you saw that in the first, you know, few minutes where uh, they were getting out and running. You know, they're playing in transition. It was, you know, selfish, un unselfish basketball where you know you're, you're getting your teammates involved and guys just kind of had a, an idea of where the ball was going to go and who needed to have it and then as, as soon as that adversity hit for the first time that went away so uh, where they need to go is find a way to <laughs> come together when things get tough because if you think you see Riverside's tough wait till those 20 games in the Big Ten Conference hit you uh, there are no nights off come the start of league play and with the way things are starting uh, there's a lot of work to do in a very, very, very short amount of time. So they got a couple days to, to regroup here before Saturday, but um, you know, it's they're up. Their backs are against the wall right now. And can, what can we expect on Saturday? 
I mean, we'll see. I, I picked them to win convincingly tonight, and clearly that did not happen. Uh, so, uh, like I said, I'll, I think these next few days are going to be pretty telling, um, and more so not just in their execution, but how these players respond. You know, how, how does Hanif Cheatham step up and have a bigger voice? Does, uh, you know, Derek Walker, who doesn't even play, he's sit out to transfer, but he's one of their only leaders that has played in an NCAA tournament. Does he take on more of a voice? Uh, does Cam Mack, your point guard, I know he's only a sophomore, but he's the point guard. There's a lot on his shoulders. Does he have a bigger voice? I mean, I think it's a collection of all these guys that, like I said, you need to stop worrying about you know, feelings and worrying about just, uh, you know, upsetting people. Because right now you're in a situation where uh, this thing has, has got to get better in a hurry. Uh, what we saw Tuesday night here, uh, that can't happen again. Uh, because the fans, you know, they're, they're patient, but that's pushing the patience quite a bit to, to come out with an effort like that. Nebraska will be back in action on Saturday as they face Southern Utah at 1 p.m. Central Time on BTN+. For Husker Online, I'm Allie Snow, and this is Robin Washett.